All right, here's a tank at uh, 15 months of age. It's uh, about 5 p.m. in the uh, afternoon here. And um, yeah, I'm about to go ahead and uh, do a water change, uh, clean out the skimmer, and do a little bit more maintenance. Um, I've been having some trouble with some cyano, and you can see a purplish reddish uh, covering a portion of the rocks um, down in the gravel as well. It's very unsightly. Um, not too keen about it being there, but it is a, a natural aspect of reef keeping, and it's usually a function again of uh, too many nutrients available in the water column. So uh, necessary, we have a water change here. Uh, I've already pruned out some of the macroalgae in the uh, refugium area of the sump. And I'm um, going to go ahead and siphon out some of the water as well here and uh, try to scrub off some of this uh, unsightly cyano um, algae. I've also had a number of fish have been getting picked off and disappearing one by one. Over the past several months, um, I have a porcelain crab in the tank. I don't feel it poses a threat. I've got some cleaner shrimp. I don't feel they pose a threat. I've also got a, a snapping shrimp, and uh, you can hear him snapping periodically, particularly in the evenings, quite loudly. Um, I really don't think he's the sniper, but then again, I've got uh, no other explanation. I've got a lid on the tank. Um, no one's making it over into the overflow and uh, there's no bodies found uh, not finding them in the in the mp10 pumps sometimes you'll find uh, some uh, traces of the exoskeleton a shed exoskeleton of the shrimp in there um, but i'm not finding any bodies uh, any uh, evidence anywhere so um let's go ahead and uh you know get moving all right here we are below the tank here is the uh, uh the sump and here is the skimmer. This is an SCA 301 skimmer and it's always a little bit of a challenge uh, just tuning it or truing it in. I can already see the cup is full of water um, so obviously that's not what we want. Here's the drain valve. I'll typically take a plastic cup. I'll take off the um, little cap on the end and I'll peri periodically allow the, uh, the wastewater to drain as uh, I'm doing here right now. Now I've heard some folks having a better success, uh, you know, letting a line run outside, uh, providing fresh oxygen and less uh, CO2 to get a better um, blend of uh, fine uh, protein bubbles here in the skimmer. Um, I certainly get a lot of uh, dissolved organics and uh, muck that uh, we'll see here in a little bit. Um, so it is, uh, you know, doing its job. I figure it probably could do a little bit better. Another issue is a matter of how deep uh, the water is that it's sitting in here. I think I've got about in about seven inches of water in this uh, compartment. I go ahead and cap off this uh, drain tube here, then we'll go ahead and turn the pump off. All right, just to verify the uh, depth of the water it's sitting in. I've got about seven and three quarters inches of water. That's uh, how much water this uh, skimmer is sitting in here within the sump. All right, getting a handy dandy uh, toothbrush here, do some of the uh, cleaning. So I'll go ahead and uh, relocate here into the bathroom. All right, here what we have is the removed head or cup of the skimmer assembly. And I'll take the lid off here and you can see the filth that uh, this accumulates and gathers. So uh, I'd like to say better off here and being removed from the tank than remaining in the water. Uh, really, no, no scent uh, or, or fragrance as you might expect, but uh, clearly, uh, not for the faint of heart here, this is a lot of gunk. And uh, this is from, from several weeks of uh, overdue maintenance here, so it probably hasn't been cleaned in about, eh, maybe, uh, maybe it could be a month. This is on a 50 gallon uh, cube aquarium. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse it out here and uh, use a toothbrush to do its uh, job. Of course, uh, you got the underside of the lid as well. Here it should be white. You can see it's just mucked up with film, dissolved uh, the organics. There you go. Look at this. All right. No big deal. It won't kill you. So let's go ahead and uh, clean this out here.
What I'll also do is I'm rinsing it as I'll take the uh, drain cap off the drain line. You'll see that some algae gets built up here in the line and while it's draining I'll pinch the, uh, the line here to free up some of the algae until uh, the, the tube runs clear. This is a result of the nutrients in the water plus the, the bulb that I've got on 24 hours down in the, in the sump area. No big deal. But, uh, you know, finger works quite well here. Um, I've got the toothbrush that I'll go ahead and use to go ahead and uh, clean some of this off here. Should come out uh, nice and clean when we're done. And, of course, don't leave any trace of uh, this in your sink. There, the cat came to visit down below by my feet. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean off the threaded portion down at the bottom. I'll try to do a good job cleaning this. Also what I'll do is I'll go back to the, the sump to the throat of the skimmer. I'll uh, reach the toothbrush in there as far as I can go and clear out some of that gunk. Uh, it does have some algae buildup and so on because again it is immediately adjacent to the refugium portion of the sump and that's where I've got the grow light and of course some of the light spills over into the adjacent compartments and it's it does favor the uh, growth of uh, algae wherever that light can reach but uh, here it's already looking uh, considerably better fortunately this stuff just doesn't stink All right, get the underside of the lid here. Clean this filth out too. Nothing like watching somebody clean out uh, the filth out of their skimmer cup. But again, this is uh, essential maintenance here. And I'm a little overdue for it. But it is a uh, key component of your aquarium's filtration. All right, to the best, the best you can do here. Some folks prefer to rinse this uh, not with tap water, but with actual uh, aquarium water. That's fine too. Some will say it takes a little while for the skimmer to get uh, tuned back in again after uh, cleaning it out. I think we're almost uh, almost done here. Then we'll move back to the tank portion. Actually, uh, let me clear out some of the more of this uh, this tube. Just roll this here. I roll this in my fingers, and as it drains, you know all the the algae film comes out. It's very green. This is a uh, very green algae here. All right. And of course, you don't want to lose the little uh, little plug, little tip. And put that back in there, and let me scrub this sink. Don't leave a trace. Because some of this film, it does kind of adhere to the here to the sink. This is just a precursory cleaning, and I'll be back. Of course, always careful if I come to the sink, wash my hands, um, not to use soap if I'm going right into the aquarium afterwards to avoid uh, contamination or spread of any kind of chemical agents or anything into the water. Keep the tank as a uh, pristine and avoid the introduction of anything uh, undesirable. All right, back in the sump area, the skimmer has the, the uh, pump turned off, the, uh, the cap is removed. There's a lot of gunk, of course, that collects in the throat. I'll use a toothbrush here to scrape off the inside. And uh, yeah, that's pretty disgusting. 
I'll rinse it out in a cup of water for the purpose. Come back in again and uh, make another few passes. Goal is to get as much of this filth out. There you go. And do a reasonably good job here. It'll end up being uh, much better off than it was when I started here with today's maintenance. Okay. I think that's good here. I'm going to go dump this out here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wipe out the inside of the throat of the skimmer, reconnect the, uh, the cup, and uh, then prepare for my water change. Prior to any water change, I want to ensure to get as much detritus and debris and filth um, into the overflow and into the fiber floss or uh, ideally out of the tank. Um, I've also been working to deal with the cyano I've got and uh, I've been really diminishing the light uh, here considerably over the past several days. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I think I might have got this technique from uh, CJ here is I'll take a turkey baster and I'll go ahead and just shoot uh, blasts of water through the holes in the rocks and you see all the debris and detritus come out. It's going to turn into a virtual sandstorm here but uh, you certainly don't want all these pockets of debris, uh, uneaten food and other crap just building up and uh, adding to uh, the uh, levels of uh, you know, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, uh, phosphorus um, and all that. And also notice here the cyano here, I can just blow it off the surface of the rocks and the rock is coming clear. Now when I set up the aquascape here, I use Pucani rock, which is extremely porous. So plenty of opportunities and anchor points for anything. You know, essentially anchor points for corals, uh, for algaes, the unwanted algaes. But uh, here I am, I'm actually just blowing blasts of water and it's just shearing off this, this cyano here, purple, red purple algae. Um, I've also got it on some of the corals here, which it tends, it'll can choke out the polyps, and it's just blowing right off. So uh, hopefully the end result will be good. Hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of this stuff filtered out here in my water change that's going to come up here. I've got about 15 gallons of water. This is a 50-gallon tank. The sump holds about another 20 gallons. I guess if it were full, otherwise another 10. So we'll talk about a about 60 gallon volume of water here. But uh, this is going to turn into an absolute uh, milkshake here as I blast through all the crevices here with this turkey baster throughout the rock work. And I've got a lot of rock here. Here I've got the uh, bubble tips up at the top. It did walk around. It was one. Now it's two. So it has a split and uh, both are anchored uh, pretty close by each other. I'm not sure where they're ultimately going to head to, but hey, I'm pretty happy with two. I'm sure they'll each grow and uh, then I can decide what to do. Keep them both. So, uh, section of Monopora is really uh, encrusting. It's looking good. Um, I've had, you know, my ups and downs with uh, everything else. Corals, some not doing so well. Too much light, not enough light. Learning from all the trial and error. I've got a Belize uh, rock anemone over here and I thought it would have too much current. It's on the left side. But it seems to be anchored in you know, liking it. So it's probably a little hard to see anything in this tank right now um, as it gets more and more like a snow globe. But I really want to get rid of this very ugly, undesirable uh, red algae, cyano. And I'll have to look at, uh, take a deep hard look at my uh, routines here. Probably not doing uh, water changes uh, often enough. Got a little lazy. We had, of course, here in South Florida, we had Hurricane Irma. About, uh, was it a month and a half ago? September 10th, September 11th. It's now uh, towards the end of November. We just had Thanksgiving. So, uh, 
know, the heat got pretty high here with no electricity for five and a half days. Fortunately, had a neighbor kind enough to let me throw an extension over the fence, so I got the whole aquarium life support system had uh, power. But then again, as the temperature rose inside the house, it got up to the mid-80s. Uh, the tank water got uh, warm as well, so I had some coral melt. Some things are trying to recover, and some just might not. It's just uh, rolling with the punches here, getting smarter as we go. Always remain humble in the hobby. And if you don't, the hobby will humble you. But uh, very disappointingly, I lost a number of fish in the past several days. Uh, one of my two clowns, Ocelaris, definitely the more robust one, disappeared. I had a Macosca Ras, disappeared. Had a, uh, oh, my beloved uh, Yellow Ras. As humble as can be, that fish survived a wipeout where everything else got wiped out, disappeared. And not a trace of any of the bodies anywhere. So I'm going to hold off on uh, replenishing any of the fish livestock until I get my bearing. What's going on? Or catch somebody in the act. Sit here at night with a flashlight and see what uh, what's going on. Who might be responsible for these uh, homicides. But this rock is just absolutely so porous. I can force water using the turkey baster in one side and see a cloud of smoke completely on the back side of that big hunk of rock. Good thing about that is you have a lot of surface area. All the bacteria to adhere to and populate. But then again, that much more you know, areas, nooks and crannies for all the undesirable stuff. Got a little sailfin Blenny. He's got a heck of a personality, an outsized personality. And uh, I was doing a water change uh, a few months ago. As I bring the water level down, you know, the tops of the rocks are ex exposed. And uh, that little sucker was actually wedged in one of the holes above the water level. And probably not too happy with me. I was trying to squirt him to get him back down into safety. We're ultimately, we're successful, but uh, always keep a watchful eye on that little guy anytime I'm doing a water change and bringing the water level down. Just something to be wary of. Now I'm hoping by loosening all this cyan up, it not only kills it, but. Uh, and I don't know if it will kill it, in fact, but it'll just dislodge it. It will actually make its way over the overflow. And I let that um, fiber floss do its job, filter out all this particulate matter and junk. Oops. Got to use some more. I'm not a. They got to don't use the glue like I should. I try to hope that, uh, you know, balance or wedging a uh, frag or a frag plug in a little crevice will serve to hold, but uh, you know, rarely is that the case. Got to just use uh, some super glue, some epoxy or adhesive. But uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty horrifying to take a look at the the cloud here in the tank. But uh, sure enough, it does clear itself up, and it looks absolutely beautiful after all everything settles. And a few more heads of Duncan. Here I got the bubble coral, I'm trying to make sure that's not touching anything. And the trumpet corals are really thriving. They seem to be doing well. Seems to be an easy coral to grow. Heads are forming. Really not very finicky at all.
All right, I'm going to try to work my way around the side and around the back here. All right, some other maintenance that I need to perform here this time is on my water circulation pumps. What I have here is the wet side of uh, my one of my two MP10s. These are uh, typically connected to the back of the back wall of the aquarium. The magnetic side on the outside of the tank is what causes this to adhere. But as you can see here in the grill, the fan, it's all gummed up with with algae, with uh, scum, and uh, it's probably lost a lot of its efficiency. So what I'm going to do is take it apart and uh, go ahead and scrub it. Now there is a technique here for uh, removing the grill here. It's either clockwise or counterclockwise. Just be careful because you don't want to damage the parts. Particularly if you're going to take off the propeller, you don't want to dam damage the uh, impeller. Uh, or the assembly here, but there's a lot of garbage in here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, scrub it down. Make it more uh, smooth and aerodynamic, so more efficient, and it should help with the flow, improve the flow. Of course, I never have these spinning anywhere near 100% of their capacity. They're very powerful pumps. Just going to scrub the fan blades carefully with an old toothbrush. The housing. And it's uh, coming uh, nice and clear. Just want to be very careful. You don't want to bend anything. You don't want to damage anything. But you want to get all this garbage off of here. It builds up just like on the bottom of a boat. It never gets removed out of the water. All those barnacles. You can ask yourself uh, if that doesn't uh, contribute to uh, slowing the system down. All right, here's the uh, the cage. Just uh, going back and forth here. Toothbrush is fine. You can get a uh, foxtail brush as well to get in all the nooks and crannies. But uh, this should be sufficient. Get up from the inside, the outside, all around here. can't let this stuff uh, go. A little cleaning does, uh, does the system good. Alright, I got a pump on the left side as well. This is the main pump or the right one. I've got a slave master system here running. And um, this one also runs, connects to a battery backup. So not only do I have to power down the switch that connects to the plug of this particular pump, but I also have to disconnect it from the, uh, the battery backup. So it actually stops spinning to enable me to remove it to perform uh, cleaning. All right, just to give it a good uh, visual examination. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the cage back on. Now let me see here. I think this turns, it turns counterclockwise. So you want to check with the manufacturer here, make sure you connect it in properly and you don't force it. Here I've got more algae built up around the base. A little fingernail action will kind of get take care of that here. Final rinse. All your equipment uh, will thank you for this. Keep it running. Maximize your investment in aquarium equipment. It can be rather expensive. And of course, clean up all the evidence in the sink area. And here's the cat who can't stay away for a very long. Kelvin. Hey. There we go. Hey, buddy. Hanging out with me, cleaning the fish tank, huh? All right. Not a lazy day at all. And if regular aquarium maintenance and good observation doesn't do anything for you, it will at least help you find the occasional missing fish. Uh, here in my overflow, 
uh, view from the top, I actually found my missing Ocelaris clown, Lucy. Uh, I can go ahead and introduce her back to Dewey, her partner, as well as their rose bubble tip anemones now that I found her and she must have figured out a way to get over the overflow into the sump area. Um, see her wiggling away. Hopefully she's uh, found some kind of food to sustain herself with in there. Uh, it's probably been a lonely uh, few days. I just attributed her loss to another one of the sudden disappearances, but was surprised because she's a pretty robust fish. So I'm happy to report that uh, my Sunday afternoon aquarium maintenance did result in a positive outcome. There she is, wiggling around underneath the, uh, the return tee. So let me go ahead and net her out, get her back in the main tank. Awesome. All right, post water change, about 18 gallons have been changed. Cleaned out all the filter pads. Skimmer's been cleaned. Now the cup is not obscured by all the scum and you can see the bubble action. I'll be checking that over the next few days and tuning it in. And then once all the haze is cleared in the aquarium due to the salt mix, I'll go ahead and get a little video in for that too. All right, and here's a glimpse of the tank about 24 hours post water change. The rock structure is looking a lot cleaner with uh, a lot of that uh, cyano uh, removed. Um, corals are looking decent and uh, yeah, it's looking a lot better here. So go into more detail here in a later video um, just kind of monitor uh, conditions here over the next uh, several weeks and so keep an eye on uh, any retur return of the uh, cyano which you can still see here in the in the gravel bed uh, it was pretty bad though I have to admit it was pretty bad before so uh, naturally uh, it's obviously a good signal of uh, some needed uh, maintenance oh yes and the bubble coral fell off its uh, little roost there so let me go ahead and get that fixed so that's what we got Thanks for tuning in.